This is the Stripe Sessions website at stripesessions.com. So this is the second Stripe Sessions website that I know of. And I've got the first one here in a tab. Uh, the screenshot taking process didn't go particularly well, but you get an idea. They've had this ribbon in the background. And so you can see that they've done a similar idea here uh, with a different, uh, different execution. And uh, what I quite like about this idea is that it sort of reminds me of a sequel. I mean, they had an event last year and now they're having an event this year. And, uh, and so it is essentially a SQL event, but they've also taken this idea of a SQL website and they've taken similar concepts, but done them differently. And that's quite exciting. The color, just like in the last website, is mostly black and white, except for this giant, let's call it a ribbon, but it's also this sort of blob. Uh, except for this blob or ribbon, that adds most of the color to the website. The rest of it is generally black and white, you can see here. And they've gone for a very strong contrast between the flowing organic shapes of this ribbon and the very rigid modular grid they've got subtly in the background. And I quite like that contrast because they're two opposite ends of the scale. They've, they've really gone as far as they can with the two sides of the contrast rather than having them close together. Sort of everything about this ribbony blob thing is different from the structure that overlays the whole website. And this contrast is reinforced as you scroll, you can see the blob stays where it is in, in space, let's say, uh, and the web page, everything that's laid on this modular grid uh, moves, including the grid itself. So that contrast is again reinforced by the movement or lack of movement. Uh, one thing I like about these uh, call to actions is that they are still fitting within the grid. You can see here, they, they sit in these grid lines, they sit in these uh, modules here. Uh, but they're rounded, so that's a nice way to separate the actions you can take from other things that grab your attention, like this title. They've got this uh, rounded corner, which is a pretty standard uh, approach for buttons, for example, to round the corners. But in this case, they're highlighting that contrast even more because they're always sort of filling this grid. But in the case of these things, they want you to notice even more, they're pulling away from that grid and uh, adding slightly more contrast. The important thing about the grid is that just like Stripe's normal website at stripe.com is they've set up this grid and they stick to it uh, quite well. They're sort of almost religious in there, uh, how strict they are about following the grid. Lots of websites set up a visible structure like this grid sort of thing, but actually it's just there for visual impact or for visual interest. It sits in the background, but the elements in the foreground don't really respect it. In this case, the elements almost always respect the grid very well. And uh, I imagine that's quite hard to do. And so it impresses me even more. You can see here, for example, this title text is sitting on the baseline. You can see, like I said before, these buttons sit within these grid modules. You can see the, the title's uh, sort of background shape is defined by the grid. And uh, one of the things I like about the way they've approached this grid is that even though it is very strict at first glance, even though they've got this strong modular sort of squared grid, they're still finding ways to be playful. And so a good example is this, um, I mean, it's, it's hard to see against the blob, but if I scroll down slightly, you can see they've got San Francisco, California. They could have extended this text across here, but they put it on a new line and then they indented the text. So they've got this uh, grid module left alone and the text starts in the next grid module. Generally, when you set up a grid like this, you're sort of encouraged to be a bit less creative because you are following stricter guidelines in the grid. But uh, in this case, they've said, no, we're going to put a grid in and then we're going to intentionally ignore it or intentionally uh, not use parts of it where you might expect to just to have that little bit of extra creativity. Uh, this title down here is another good example. So they, they've still ended the text, but they've added a bit more of this background color as this sort of offshoot square that doesn't really exist other than to uh, add visual interest and probably to fill up some empty space. 
maybe they felt that this space here was a bit empty and so that's a good example uh, a good time to throw in a little sprinkle some kind of visual interest there but um, th this sort of thing is it's quite a creative use of a rather strict grid Uh, another example of the creative use of the grid is this section. So they've got the same thing here for the title. They've got these three uh, agendas for the day. And instead of having day one, day two, day three, all vertically aligned, top to top, uh, they've diagonally, essentially aligned them around this title. So again, it all respects the grid. You can see each of these... Uh, sections below that talk about what's happening on each day fill up the grid spaces really nicely but they've done this diagonal sweep and so that's not normally what people especially me would think of when they thought oh I'll put in a grid I'll, I'll respect it well I wouldn't then jump to oh we should have these three different days move diagonally upwards especially given that uh, generally the Time moving forwards goes left to right and top to bottom. So they've gone left to right, but bottom to top. Day one, day two, day three. So they're respecting the grid, but they're also playing with it and being quite uh, dismissive of the grid, which is um, a really nice contrast. Uh, one thing I will say about the um, this section is that I, I partly wonder if the reason they did this is because day two and day three have more events listed day one only has two if you'd aligned all of these top to top essentially so they're all lined up first of all you'd have this big gap up here but they could have maybe solved that with the title but second of all the days with uh, more events on them day two and three would be sticking out the bottom essentially because they're taller than what's happening on day one and so i quite like they found this creative way to get around that have the uh, it's a bottom of this area of content be a bit flatter and have the content wrap around this title. It's a, a creative way to solve a few different problems or uh, create a few different interesting effects at once. Uh, I want to jump back up to this carousel. I'm not sure if this is the reason they did this and it is quite orderly, but I quite like this because generally if you put containers like these side by side, it highlights and sort of align them nicely. It highlights the difference in content. And so you can see here, exchange insights with your peers. They've got three lines of text down here, but some of these have two lines of text. And uh, this is not bad because it is well, well designed. It's all proportional. Uh, it's all orderly. And I think they would feel fine side by side, mm -hmm. but this uh, jumped out at me as an interesting way. If you did have content in containers where the content was quite different, if you have this sort of up and down staggered layout, you're not going to be able to tell that the content is that different because everything's not lined up in a way that lets you run your eyes along it and see the differences. And so a better example maybe is that this title is three lines, whereas this title is two lines. If you had those side by side, you'd much more easily notice that one of the titles was longer, took up three lines instead of two. And so I wanted to point this out as a, a thing that other people could do. Like I said, they didn't really need it in this case. Other people could do when they've got content in containers that's uh, you know different shapes and sizes. This might be an interesting way to uh, get around that, make everything still feel like it belongs together. Uh, I want to talk more about the blog ribbon. This is essentially a centerpiece of the website and uh, really grabs your attention, which Stripe is known for. I mean, the main Stripe website has the the giant uh, flowing gradient, and so this is a reference to that as well as this. Uh, previous website I talked about. And so it's on brand for Stripe in general, but uh, I quite like what they've done with it as you scroll down because the Stripe, unlike the Stripe.com website where the centerpiece stays at the top, this one essentially follows you. But um, you might have already seen it, what they do to stop it from getting in the way essentially or distracting attention is they add this sort of smoked glass particle effect. So as you scroll down, it doesn't ever completely disappear, right? It's still vaguely there in the background. But when they need you to focus on the content, they're putting it as far in the background as they can. And it's there permanently as a way to add texture to what you're looking to, but not necessarily lots of color or you know distracting visuals because it starts out distracting and that's the whole point. But it, they still keep it around in the background very uh, subtly, but it stops being as distracting. Uh, one thing I like they did is instead of having a uh, illustration here, for example, they essentially put a window in the page. And so 
you are seeing back through to the blob through this window. So it, that reminds you that it's always been there in the background, faded away, but then it comes back for this. And what I quite like about this is that even though it's faded away almost to the point that you don't really notice it in areas like this, once you get down here and they're showing you part of it again, they, they bring it back, not fully, there's still this smoked glass effect, but they bring it back so that you can see that this window you're seeing through is uh, part of a whole, you know, it's part of that blob again, and they're, they're putting it slightly more in focus. And this works mainly because it would distract from the text, but actually the text here is in these white containers. And so the background there doesn't allow the, um, the blob to show through. And so it's not distracting you from the text as much as it would in a section like this, where there's no background. Uh, it's just also quite nice because they're, like I said, they're using the blob that's ever present. That means that they don't need things like decoration as much. They've got something that's adding visual interest to the page whenever they need it, and they can just pull it back in when it's needed. Uh, if I jump down a bit more, we get to the speaker section. Yeah. And uh, they've reused a uh, technique here that I quite liked from the previous version, if I scroll down here. So you can see here, it's a similar speaker carousel, uh, similar technology. And uh, I think it was quite hit last time, so they probably kept it around. You can see here that this, uh, the blob ribbon thing in the background on the previous Stripe Sessions website is this blue color. And they use that blue color to tint the uh, speaker photo that was active. And uh, they've kept that effect here. So now the, the blob is sort of this uh, purpley, you know, these warm tones. And they've used that just for the uh, active speaker. You can see that the one you know, well, I can't really show you without clicking on it, but um, you can see that this photo on the left here doesn't have this sort of reddish tint on the left. When I click on it, it gets added. So this is a nice way to add visual interest, add an active state to a photo like this, but keep all the photos looking the same because they're all black and white and make them all feel like they belong to the website because you've got colors being used that are from the website as a whole. I mean, obviously there's no problem with using color photos of your speakers, but each one's gonna have slightly different effects. Each one's gonna have a slightly different approach to color. And so they won't feel as coherent as this sort of black and white tinted effect. So they've gone for full control over how the photos appear and um, how the colors get applied. And that makes everything feel like it belongs to the same website. Uh, scrolling down again, we've got this sort of uh, ticket uh, represented and uh, they've added a what looks like a barcode but actually it's waving subtly and this to me doesn't look particularly like the main centerpiece ribbon here because the shapes here are a lot more uh, sort of circular organic but I think it is a reference to that ribbon blob and I think it's more of a reference to the ribbon on the previous website these are a lot more not straight lines but uh, a lot more um, noticeable lines running through like fiber, you know. So I think this is a, uh, a quite a nice way to take something you'd normally see on a ticket, which is a barcode and bring it back to the brand they've established for Stripe Sessions, especially because it's moving, it's waving. Well, in the one you're seeing here and in this previous one, this was always animated, always moving. And so it's uh, they sort of set up a uh, a brand motif there. Uh, as you scroll down, you can see that the, the blob is still this sort of smoke glass effect in the background. But as you scroll down and get towards the bottom, you can see it starts to come back into focus. And now it's back to where it was at the beginning. Uh, as I scroll down here and get to the final call to action, the footer of the website, uh, you can see it's fully visible and that echoes the header of the website. So they had it fully visible and then they took you through this journey of learning about Stripe sessions and now they've brought it back. Uh, right at the end to echo what you saw at the start. Uh, but in this case, of course, they're trying to convince you one last time. They're going to add much more visual impact and they've reversed the color of the background. Uh, it's, it's been a white website so far. Uh, so for them to suddenly turn that around, it adds a lot of impact and it's quite a simple effect. I'm not sure how much effort it took or how much you know, programming it took to um, change the colors like this on the stripe. It almost looks like a, a black light has been applied. I now realize, but it's, it's quite a simple effect in terms of the approach, but it has this big impact because suddenly it's a dark website. Suddenly the colors are different uh, and suddenly the um, call to action is massive. 